Well, Senator, I'm, I'm embarrassed that we're not serious about this issue. As uh, Senator Thune and I served in the House together while you were leading in these budget fights over in the Senate, uh, and we had a budget every year. Uh, we didn't always every single year have a budget the House and Senate could agree on with each other, but the House always had a budget, the Senate always had a budget. We always complied with the law, the 1974 Budget Act, that says you have to have a budget. Uh, it says you have to have a budget by April the 15th. And frankly, you, you can't do your work without a budget. Uh, you can't get spending under control without a budget. You can't appropriate uh, the way you should without a budget because what the budget does is say, here's how much money we're willing to spend on defense, and here's how much money we're willing to spend uh, on military construction, and here's how much money we're willing to spend on energy uh, that part of the budget. Uh, if you don't have that, you really don't have a starting place. Uh, and I have all the respect in the world for our, our friend from North Dakota, Mr. Conrad, but uh, to be the budget chairman and have to come to the floor and all you can talk about is what's wrong with the other budgets that have been produced because your committee hasn't produced one has to be uh, frustrating for him. Uh, no matter how effective he sounded like he was in talking about what was wrong with the people that had a plan, it's easy to find out what's wrong with somebody's plan. Uh, but uh, particularly when you haven't got any obligation apparently on your own part to come up with a plan. Remember the White House was asked uh, just uh, a few weeks ago when Senator Reid said the Senate will not have a budget, it, what their position on that was, and they said, we don't have a position on that. Now, you know, the president submitted a budget. Uh, if the, if, if, why did the president submit a budget if he doesn't want the Congress uh, to act on a budget? The House voted on his budget this year. It was 414 to zero. Not a single Democrat or Republican in the House voted for the president's budget. Last year, we voted on the president's budget, as I assume we will again today. Not a single Democrat or Republican voted on the president's budget last year. And the position of the White House is they don't care. It's an amazing situation to find ourselves in. Uh, and whoever is in charge of the Senate in the future needs to have a commitment to the American people that we're going to have a budget, we're going to have an appropriations process, and we're going to get this spending under control. We have maxed out the credit card. Everybody gets that. Uh, the figures you showed this morning of our debt relative to the countries that we sort of laugh at how irresponsible they are uh, were numbers that uh, I think we ought to look at pretty carefully. When our debt per person is greater than the Greek debt per person, I haven't seen a front page of a, of a paper in a while that didn't have something about chaos in Greece on it because they've let their government get bigger than their economy can support. They've let their debt get bigger than the gross domestic product of their country by almost two times, but now we've exceeded our debt by, by our, our debt exceeds our potential to produce goods and services in a year for the first time ever. And in fact, in the three years we haven't had a budget, the debt of the country has increased almost $5 trillion as we have spent over $10 trillion in those three years with American family, frankly, it's about it, knows it's unacceptable. And uh, your fight, uh, along with what I'm sure has to be uh, Chairman Conrad's frustration to not have a budget, uh, couldn't be a more important topic for us to be talking about today or for the American people to be asking the question, why not? Why, why, are, you, why are you just refusing uh, to do uh, your job? And uh, I know nobody, in this uh, chamber knows as much about the budget, in my opinion, as you do. And uh, your frustration of where this doesn't allow us to go to do the right things uh, is, uh, is, 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 is as great as anybody's, maybe greater than everybody's, but I think all of us know we should be doing the right thing here, which is to obey the law, create a budget, and have a budget that gets us to the place that, that we know we need to get to where our economy once again is right-sized to our government, or more importantly, our government's right-sized to our economy. Um, briefly, um, before I go to Senator Thune and get him engaged in this, based on your experience 
in the budgetary process, over six, about 60% of federal spending is mandatory entitlement spending uh, and mandatory entitlement spending. Uh, do you think that we can develop a long-term plan for the future that fails to address that large portion that's growing faster than the other part of the budget? No, we, we can't. And you know, last year for the first time ever, all of the money that came in uh, was less than the money that went out automatically to these programs where if you meet the definition for the program, you get the money. And it is at 60% now, and it hasn't been that many years ago, it was at 50%. And it wasn't that many years before that, it was at 40%. And it was, you know, and so we we're, we have got to deal with these issues because they lead us to an inevitable place. Do we want to be Europe today, just a few years from now? Surely not. Surely the answer is no. And we can't avoid that unless we have a plan. Now it's easy to talk about how bad the other plan is, but what we all ought to be doing is coming up with a plan that gets us to where we all know we need to be. If, if that was the budget, why did the president submit one? Uh, nobody really believes that's a budget. The parliamentarian said it wasn't a budget. Uh, but what it is, it'd be like your family sitting down to decide what money you're going to have to spend this year. Uh, and you say, okay, we've got X number of dollars. Let's just go out and spend it. That's no budget, particularly when you had to borrow 40% of the X number of dollars you said you had. You know, we're borrowing 40% of the money we're going to spend. The only number we have that we've agreed to is the maximum amount we'll spend, knowing we don't have anywhere near that number, and we haven't allocated that in any way. That's no budget. Everybody knows that. And everybody also knows that we're not, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't get there unless you have a way to get there. Uh, this, uh, your for family says, okay, we've done the budgeting for the year. We've just decided if we borrow almost as much money as we make, and we spend that somewhere, that's our budget. Uh, we haven't decided where we're going to spend it, haven't decided how we're going to spend it, haven't even really decided a reasonable way that we're going to get it, but we just said, here's the number of, uh, we're going to spend. Now, family, let's all go out and just start spending, and we'll meet here later this year and see how it worked out. It makes no sense at all, and everybody knows that. Uh, we, interestingly, we don't hear much about this. It's surprising to me that every day there's not a story about why for the first time ever, uh, for three years straight now, the Senate has decided it just doesn't have to do the work that the law requires it to do as we dig this hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, and uh, the longer we wait, the more difficult the solution is gonna be. Every single day that passes, it's harder to solve this problem than it would have been the day before. And now we've gone three years without a budget, and apparently we're going to go through the wet rest of this process without a budget. Uh, by the time we get to the end of this year, we'll be approaching that fourth year without a budget. And it's not like this would just be a good idea. The law says we have to have one, and we should have one. And uh, I... I uh, well, Senator Blunt, you, uh, you've been in leadership in the House. You're in the leadership of the, of the United States Senate. Be frank with us. What is it that would cause the majority party not to want to lead, not to want to lay out a plan for the future um, and just attack anybody that does lay out a plan? Well, I, I mean, I know it's hard. We all know this is a tough thing. But don't you think a party that aspires to lead the United States Senate should, instead of hiding under the table, should stand up and say what they believe we should do over the next decade financially? Well, I think the law even requires it. Now, I think the leader on the other side, the majority leader has been pretty clear about this. It's just bad politics to have a budget. Bad politics to tell the American people officially what we're for. Bad politics for our members to have to go on record saying what they're for. The president submitted a budget. There are 54 members of the president's party here in the Senate. 51 of them could pass this budget and it would be the Senate passed budget. And then you'd go to the House and you'd say, okay, let's look at the House budget and the Senate budget and see if we could agree on a budget. Uh, but they've actually they've been pretty transparent. You gotta give them some credit uh, for not, uh, uh, not trying to be different than they really are. They've just said, hey, be politically foolish for us to, 
pass a budget because then people would know what every one of 51 of our members were for and they have to say what they're for. My guess is that nobody in the majority will say they're for anything today. Not for the president's budget, not for any budget we'll submit. Uh, so you go home and say, you know, I, I'm, I'm not for any of that. You can't accuse me of being for a bad plan because I'm for no plan. And uh, that's where we are.